Hello, good bit, and welcome to your message from God. I thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining me. All right, thank you for tapping in. Welcome to the Prophetic Vessel Show. Um, if you're keen on booking me for my services, I do offer dream interpretations, love readings, spiritual path readings, as well as messages from God. I'd like to kindly inform you that my one-on-one -on -one sessions are closed, but will be reopening in four months, though. All right, this will be part four of eight for your last doppelganger. All right, part four of eight for your last doppelganger. Let's tap in further to this energy. Disclaimer before we begin, all right? All right, I'm being called to choose a different deck of cards. So the words intuition and secrecy are being highlighted within my psyche right now, which um, ties down to the disclaimer. God is wanting me to put it out now. So in part two, we established the first character that this um, individual, this energy of a person you're dealing with, we, we established their first character, their first role that they portray to society, which we... We have labeled it to be the good Samaritan, the good one, all right? That's the role, that's the character, the first kind. Um, God is saying um, part four of eight for your lost doppelganger will consist of the second character, the second role, all right, that they play in society. So we are going to be tapping into that in more depth and far in depth layers as well, establishing who this person really is, all right? So let's tap in further. Let's talk to God about this for your last doppelganger, part four of eight. Let's tap in, beloved. Let me tap us in. All right. So as I split the deck of cards here, we have two cards that are a representation of deep sorrow and misery. However, God is saying that is not the analogy I should reference when it comes to these energies, right? We have the Hermit and the Five of Cups. Both these energies are cloaked ones, all right? To be cloaked is to be an individual that walks with the shadow, walks with a certain spirit or spirits attached to you but dark ones though right so this individual god is saying the second character the second role they play or the second role they tend to embody within this instance right this is it the role of the cloaked one the character of the cloaked one the depressed one god is saying so on the table we have the hermit and the hermit is the card of depression all right the hermit energy is symbolic to deep sorrow um followed by the five of cups the card of loss grief um more sad energy right so sad is an ancestor for all these energies because we all know what it feels like to be sad and how being sad is formless because it of how it can be dissected and how sad someone can become and to what extent right so those are the energies on the table that's virgo and scorpio energy let's see what else is coming out for this energy here so we've established the second character to be the depressed role, the depressed kind, the depressed one. Let's look into that further and see why they playing a role of being depressed or seeming to be depressed or lost. Rather, lost as well. So this person puts out a show, a lot of shows. And this role is the one they play when they want sympathy. God is saying when they want to gain sympathy, when they want people to feel sorry for them, to gain their way or to gain people's trust. This is the character. This is the role that they play. This is the one they pull out. 
let's proceed in, uh, further into this energy. What are the layers here? All right. So here we have the chariot coming out. This is Cancer energy, Cancerian energy, all right? Followed by the star energy. So we have three major arcanas with the hermit, the chariot, and the star, all right? And then the only minor arcana we have on the table as of yet is the five of cups. So a lot of majors and one minor. Interesting. So this is telling me that this specific role is the one that they play a lot or the most of. Or this specific role or character, rather, is the one they have to play the most. Right? God is saying. So, this energy that I just pulled, last, the last card here after the chariot, which was Cancerian energy, Cancer. Um, we pulled the star, right? The star energy came out for this energy. So, the star is Aquarius energy. So the star is symbolic to anything peculiar, something you've never experienced or seen before, right? That sort of nature of things in life. So that's in relation to a lot of things. You can um, attach the star energy to a lot of varieties of life. That's the whole point of it, right? There's a lot to it. So those are the energies on the table. So God is saying, you know, with the star card, um, it being placed here as I was called to place it here. It's very symbolic. Um, it's very symbolic in its way that this is the role that takes the lead, God is saying. This is the character that this person spends the most time training themselves to become or act right. All right, this is a character they want to, they, they plan to master, right? So the energies on the table are, you know, Queen of Swords. So the Queen of Swords energy is Gemini energy followed by the High Priestess. Piscean, Pisces energy, all right? And then we have the Knight of Wands following, lastly, which is Aries energy, all right? So we are in Aries season. Um, Aries energy represents the spirit. Aries is the sign that rules over the actions that we do, all right? The actions we take, rather, right? That's Aries. So the Queen of Swords, which is the card that um, is ruled by Gemini, it represents utmost clarity, all right? And then we have the Knight of Wands, that we did establish to be Aries energy coming out here, but it's coming out as a Knight of Wands energy. So Aries energy is what it is. However, it has its form that it comes in, um, form that it takes on. Every sign takes on a different form, hence the row um, can be what it is, right? Praise be. So we have the Knight of Wands here. So the Knight of Wands is frivolous energy. The Knight of Wands is detangling the knight of wands is sort of like unrivaled passion towards matters of the heart all right so this role hints its significance because it plays a significant role in the way this person feels about themselves this is the role that takes on this person's emotions Hence, we have the Hermit as well, followed by the Five of Cups. Those are the energies that came out first on the table. We did establish the representation of them being depression, sorrow, being lost, feeling lost, and being sort of an empty vessel within, right? So with that being said, God is saying this happened further. So... There's the Seven of Swords coming out, the card of tricks, deception. Old, new tricks, old types of tricks. So it's, it's, it's I, I was called to place it on top of the Queen of Swords energy, which is the card of clarity, um, right? These are both Gemini energy, by the way. 
um, Gemini energy is a representation of the sign of duality, right? Um, the yin and yang, the infinity sign um, in its form as well. So there's an energy of this individual feeling as though this role it's significant because they feel like it also plays a part in their love life, their, their social life, and their socioeconomic status quo, therefore. Their love life, for instance, the example God would like me to establish would be, rather take this analogy, take this reference point, this case study. They meet someone and they like that individual because they're insecure within themselves they don't think that individual likes them back so what they do is they play the role right to get the individual's empathy it's quite sad if you ask me right it's quite sad that this person has to do this that means there's a void within so that's just the example for the love life based analogy. But that reference point, that case study just shows that, you know, evil don't pay, being a bad person, it don't pay, doing bad things to people, it don't pay because you end up being in this state of being, you end up living this type of life and things don't move for people like that because they're unable to evolve, they're unable to heal, they're unable to really check themselves before, all right? So with that being said, we have this role that they portray. Um, it's cynical nature, it's, it, if you study it clinically or try to understand it from that perspective as I am, for part four of A for your last double camera, right? Part four of eight for your lost awful again. And what I'm seeing, it's basically clear that this person feels lost. We know that the reason they play this main role, this main character, is to tend to the certain aspect of their life that has to do with love. We made that example. And we've also established that there's also a socioeconomic status quo they have to uphold and maintain in their life. And they need finances to do that. They need money, financial stability, income, all right? Again, back to the role. They gain empathy to gain some form of morale, virtue to have an emotional attachment onto someone or psychological grip or hold that they want to place onto someone, they use that empathy. And even with their finances, their finances, all right, even with that, they have to pull out this role. So this person, their socioeconomic status quo is also in relation to them feeling like they would rather play this role than be nothing or have nothing um, in terms of like, them wanting to maintain the way people see them. They care a lot about that. They care a lot about their reputation, their image in terms of the eyes of others, not their own healing, their own spiritual journey of life, therefore. Nah, it's more like, what does this person think of me? I have to fix myself because they think of me like this. And behind the scenes, that person probably doesn't even care about them. That person doesn't give a damn. So that's obviously there's clinical, cynical ways in which we can look at this. There's sociopathic nature to this as well. With an extreme um, amount of identity disorders. The This person's Empathetic character speaks volumes about this. This person, they have to train themselves, right? They have to train themselves. The star energy um, 
is Aquarius energy. Aquarius energy, we did establish rules over the things that, you know, we tend to in life not understand the, the peculiar, the strange. So with that being said here, look, we have the hermit coming out twice, the card of being cloaked coming out twice. It's as if there's a emotional training course this person puts themselves through, a trial run where they trigger or activate or enable circumstances within the reality to test themselves like someone someone of a drama starter someone who pushes everything and everyone they don't care and surrounding that narrative it's in a way that they do it psychologically to train themselves to see if they're going to be able to take on the role of the, the drama they've started. So this is a study of the circumstance, the study of people, the study of um, analytical nature of life and the advantage and power of having that sort of leverage on people. So they take on the form of someone that you, you that has to train themselves to feel. They have to train themselves to have emotions. They have to train themselves to feel empathy for people. Hence, I address the sociopathic nature. Hence, the clinical, um, cynical nature of this as well, you know, can be looked at here. The spiritual essence of the derivative of where this stems from. Because we also have, if you have watched the series School of Personality, there is a, God is wanting me to look at that and reference it as an analogy. There is a key essence to clinical illnesses that are psychologically based that has to do with spiritual meanings, right? Spiritual based essence behind clinical illnesses such as split personality hence um god is wanting me to reference that it's sort of like that the sociopathic nature there is um types levels of sicknesses illnesses you can sort of study or research to understand based on how this person thinks there's there there's a clinical problem with them therefore right This person's thought process, furthermore, they have to train themselves to genuinely look like they're smiling, genuinely look like they're happy, or genuinely look like they're in a particular state of being. But in this instance, they have to train themselves to be sad. They train themselves to be sad. They train themselves to be depressed, play off this miserable, damsel in distress, lost energy. And it works a lot in their reality. It works for them because they surround themselves with people that are very also void or empty within themselves and therefore they're vulnerable to this person's tactics and power tools and schemes. But I feel that with you, beloved, this role shows that this person 
they're not only unwell, they have an obsession, all right? Because this role is what you bring out of them the most. You make them feel so sad, so depressed, so miserable. I feel like it's not you, it's, it's also the success of who you are, your identity in life. <laughs> Isn't it crazy that there are these types of people People that don't want to believe because people that don't want to uh, believe in any cause that has nothing to do with their self-proclaimed prophecies, self-fulfilling prophecies of life. Because this motherfucker, the reason they hate you in this way and have this love for you at the same time, it illustrates that they're unwell within themselves. There's an imbalance within themselves. There isn't equilibrium, all right? In their cerebellum, all right? Which is ruled by the sign of Libra, ruled by the planet of Venus, all right? So if you study the planetary bodies, you would know. So, God is saying that this person is obsessed with the way your life is going, the way your life is headed. They're obsessed with how things are going to turn out for you. They're obsessed with seeing the outcome of your life. All right. They're obsessed with the direction that you're going to take, who you're going to become more of with time. They're obsessed with also being a part of that or at least seeing that or having a hand in that somehow. But they know that's wishful thinking, that is a far dream, that's, an, that's a fantasy world, right? Fantasy island, fantasy way of thinking. So with that being said here, we have the page of swords, the, the energy of spying, all right? And I was called to put it on top of the queen of swords, the card of clarity, the card of also having information, knowledge, wisdom, all right? I feel that this person, they spend a lot of time trying to understand you. They spend, they've spent a lot of time to, trying to learn you, learn your codes, how you move, who you are, you know, who you identify to be. Because there's a void in them that they want to fill. And God is saying already this person's an empty vessel. So a lot within them is unhealed. A lot within them is imbalanced as we've established that even within their cerebellum, their brain, that part of their brain, there's an imbalance. There's clinical, cynical nature to this person's way of being, all right? That they, it's like this person, they live in the state of being so much that like, they don't want to address it. They're comfortable with these roles, the state of being, this way of being. So going back to this, it's like this person, it's sort of like looking at you, they feel like you have direction. Um, something that they, they feel like they lack. So, therefore, it's sort of like there's this relationship where that they have with you where the reason they're obsessed with the direction at which your life is headed is because they want to see, like, it's like this is someone that feels like watching you somewhat bring some form of truth for them. Watching you, someone makes them feel like they know what's going on in life. Watching you makes them feel even connected, grounded, elevated. So this person has a weird relationship with you, beloved. One which I feel like you're also weirded out by yourself. Like you're weirded out by this person's perception of you. You're weirded out by the extent at which they're willing to just go with the way that they act, the way that they are, the way that they, how they identify themselves to be, who they uphold themselves to be in reality, in their life in general, right? 
So God is saying that this person, a lot of their bad deeds have caught up to them. A lot of their bad deeds are going to also keep catching up to them. These are things they cannot run away from. I'm being shown the seven of swords energy, which we have established to be the card of tricks, right? I did tell you, um, I did address that. And then I was called to put it on top of the hermit here, which is the card of the unseen, anything unseen, right? And then I'm, called, I'm being called to illustrate the fact that we have, you know, the star here. I'm being called to put it on top of the hermit. So the star is peculiar, strange energy. So it's on top of the hermit, the energy of the unseen, anything unseen or unheard of even, right? Followed by the card of tricks. So it's sort of like, this person, they look at you in such, it's like they will always look at you in this way. It's a constant perception within their state of being. It's like the imbalance in their cerebellum and their brain leads them to believe things that aren't true. They live in delirium. They live in delusions, all right? So therefore, this person, a lot of their information, they, they, they withhold a lot of the secrecy. As we've established before we began, there was the energy of secrecy and illusion. A lot of that has to do with this, the fact that there's this role they have to play the depressed one, but the depressed one is the cloaked one. The cloaked one is cloaked because they have a lot to hide. They have a lot of secrecy. Therefore, right, Ashe, God is saying, think of that a little bit more. Look at that closely. The fact that they have these roles they play and there's one which they have to embody as this depressed role and it's the role that has the most secrets to hide. The identity that has done a lot of bad things. The, ident the identity that lives in the most illusion. It's like this is serious. This person wakes up every day and literally asks themselves who they want to play. So is it the first one, the good civilian, the good one? We established that in part two. In part four, we're establishing a different role, the depressed one. They ask themselves, am I gonna play this role? We are going to establish, you know, the third role, which is the final role, the finale, all right? I wonder what that has to do with the rest of this. I guess we'll have to find out in part five or six or seven or eight. <laughs> Coming back to this energy, God is saying, this individual here, you're a lost doppelganger energy. There's someone very sickly, unwell, clearly. God is saying, anything that this person has tried to do to you, you should not take it personally, therefore, because clearly they seriously unwell. Clearly they seriously have a lot to heal from, a lot to work on, a lot to evolve from, a lot to unlearn in life. And you can sort of engage with an energy of an individual who refuses to put in the work within themselves. You can't spoon feed them growth. You can't spoon feed this person evolution and you can't spoon feed them righteousness within themselves. Because clearly they have lunacy they live in lunacy and they're someone that it's like they need sort of true saving but they need to want it so because they don't want it it will not they will not align with it with saving instead they'll continue to sort of dive into this path of unrighteousness because that's the path they're choosing. They're choosing to remain in this state of being, of not addressing the real things they need to work on, the real things they need to heal from, rather running away from all those things and creating identities to, to really fit the illusions, the serious illusions and also desires. All right? 
right? Illusions and desires go hand in hand when it comes to this person. Because the reason they choose to stay in the illusion is because it feeds their spirit. And anything that feeds your spirit is something you truly desire, right? You want that. That's why it makes you feel that good. That's why you do it that well. That's why you have that sort of relationship with it. This person, the reason they can play off these roles is because they've been doing it for a very long time. This is six plus years. Think about a job. The more you do it, the better you get at you get at it, Ashay. And this person, they've mastered these roles because they've been playing them every day. They choose which day to betray which role for what reason or cause or purpose, so to speak. So beloved, this is someone that they're really unhealed, man. So troubled, so lost, and within themselves. So God wanted us to touch on this character, the second role, the second person they identify as, right? So I'm being called to end part four, all right, of eight for your last doppelganger. I will see you guys in part five where we dissect this energy further into more detail and layers. I'm grateful for your time. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. All right, welcome to the Prophetic Vessel Show. Um, if you're keen, again, I'm booking me. Uh, I do offer dream interpretations, love readings, spiritual path readings, as well as messages from God. I did state, I did say that my one-on-one -on -one sessions are closed, but I will reopen those in four months. I'm sending you nothing but love. Stay safe, stay high vibrational. Bye, beloved.